Hi, everyone. This is Tim Campso with Action Coach of Indiana, and I'd like to welcome you to our Six Steps to a Profitable Business That Can Work Without You webinar. We do things a little differently here at Action Coach because we're all about taking action. So there's going to be different times throughout this presentation that I'm going to ask you to participate, even though you are not here physically. Uh, please go ahead and do the things that I ask because you'll um, you'll just get, have a better experience. And I'll explain that a little bit uh, later in terms of why we do that. All right, so let's get started. Can I begin by asking how many of you who are listening to this recorded webinar are business owners? Go ahead and raise up your hand. All right, now, who are uh, those of you who work for someone else? Raise your hand up. Now, what I ask folks when we're in person is how many of business owners here uh, wish that they still worked for someone else? And, and uh, invariably, somebody puts up their hand. And so then I say, I don't know what's worse, you know, the people who raised their hand or the people who laughed at the question. But being in business is a tough gig sometimes. It's one of the loneliest jobs there is. So first of all, I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this webinar to learn about what business coaching is and how to grow your business. Now there's six steps to growing your business that we teach here at Action Coach. And we find that by doing it this way, a systematic methodology, which by the way, we've been doing for over 28 years, has helped tens of thousands of companies. All right, now by a show of hands, again, I know we're not live, but go ahead and participate. By a show of hands, how many of you have made mistakes in your life? And how many of you would say you're experts at making mistakes? Now, for me, I have to raise both hands and even a foot because, you know, I make a lot of mistakes. Well, here's the thing about that, right? How did we learn how to walk? We learned how to walk by falling down, right? By making mistakes. And we had a lot of people who supported us in that, right? They encouraged us, they clapped, they cheered. And so all we knew is that, is that we were doing exactly what we were supposed to be doing. And so we kept going until we figured it out. So what happens when we become adults? Right? We're taught for some reason that mistakes are wrong and we have to hide from the mistakes we've made or we have to stop making mistakes. And, and so we stop putting ourselves out there. Well, I guarantee that during this webinar, you're going to learn specific steps, strategies, and ideas to help you stop making mistakes in your business and build a better business and become a better leader. But here's the catch. You have to be willing to put yourself out there. If you just sit and listen to this webinar, you're going to retain about 5% of the content. If you take notes, that retention will go up to 50%. So, Make sure you grab yourself a pen and a paper and take notes as I go through this webinar. And then if you fully participate in the experience, so when I ask you to raise your hand, you raise your hand. When I ask you a question, you answer the question. If you write in colors, you actually draw in the left hand and the right hand side of your brain. So go ahead and grab a pen with multiple colors or grab different pens with different colors and what we find or what studies have shown is that when you fully participate in the learning experience, as I've just described, your retention goes up to 98%. So the only failure during the seminar, during life, during our business is the failure to what? Call this out for me, everyone. Yes, it's the failure to participate. So if you give 100%, you're going to get 100%. All right, there's two parts to this this webinar. The first is the overview that I'm going to be providing you now. It's the, the education of the six steps to building a better business, a more profitable business that can run without you. Step two is then a deep dive into your business one-on-one -on -one to take the principles that I'm going to be sharing with you during this session and looking at how they specifically apply to your business. So can I get everyone's commitment that you're going to fully participate and take action tonight or today or this morning or wherever it is that you're watching this? 
Fantastic. Awesome. All right. A little bit of my background. I was born and raised in Canada, moved to the U.S. in 2005. And the reason I share that is um, I might pronounce words that you think are not correct, but I guarantee in my head they sound the same as you all say them. I started working at the age of 15 running a local gas station on the weekends where I opened it while the, while the owner slept in. Then for the past 28 years, I worked on brands that I'm sure you all know extremely well, like Kentucky Fried Chicken, Raid, Off, Ziploc, Saran Wrap, Edge and Skin to Mid Shave Gel, Pledge, Fantastic, Scrubbing Bubbles, Sargento Cheese, Red Gold Tomatoes. Those businesses uh, ranged from $1.5 million to over $500 million in revenue. They're all family-owned um, businesses or, or the company that owns those brands are all family owned from uh, small family owned companies up to very large uh, family owned companies. And I had full P&L responsibility of those businesses. So I was running those businesses, had uh, a team that reported into me and then a cross-functional team uh, that I was responsible for leading and guiding and directing. In that same time, I've coached, mentored, trained, taught well over 200 people. Um, some of those folks have gone on to become vice presidents, presidents, and even a CEO, both here and in Canada. All right, this is my family. On the far uh, left is my eldest stepson, Tony. He's 26 and lives in Milwaukee. In the middle, Enrique is 21, lives here in the greater Indianapolis area. My beautiful wife, Petrita, and my youngest stepson, Adrian, is 15 and also lives here with us. Um, prior to Action Coach, I chased my career for over 10 years, and that required me to move frequently to be able to take advantage of the next opportunity that presented itself to me, and that had a huge impact on my family. My wife's in a 100% commission sales role, so it takes her about three to four years to build up her network and, and build up her business, and I've been moving us for, for every three to four years. Uh, for, for the last 10 years. So that's had a significant uh, harm on her career. This coupled with the fact that corporations have seemed to be focusing less on employees and more on profit led me to realize that this was no longer the, the right fit for me and for my family. Additionally, I grew up not having a lot of money and I didn't realize that we didn't have money until I went to school and I started getting teased for not having the right shoes and not having the right jeans. And, and then my dad got hurt. He was a mechanic and he got hurt at work and was, uh, had a, a surgery that didn't fix the problem. He wasn't able to go back to work. So um, this, was, this happened right before I was about to go to college. So this had a, a really big financial impact on our family. So um, I've always wanted to help others as a result of that. I was a, a big or, um, a peer counselor in high school. I was a lay counselor in church. I was a big brother for uh, six years in Milwaukee. And uh, my number one priority at work has always been to coach and train my team to grow and develop into whatever it is that they aspire to be. Um, a little bit about our company. So TBC, uh, our company name is TBC Action Coach of Indiana. TBC is both my initials, Timothy Brian Campso, but it's also has a dual meaning. It also stands for transformed by Christ. I came to, to know God in, in uh, my 30s, and it had a huge um, impact on my life, a, a huge transformation. And so um, that's my roots. And I, I want to make sure that uh, I don't forget the impact that that's had. And so I've named the company after that. And our whole reason for being, our vision is to impact 10,000 underserved people through the profits of our organization over the next 10 years. And how we're going to do that is by helping 3,000 business owners over the next 10 years. All right. Why did I choose Action Coach? Well, I believe it's the best option for me to be able to realize that vision and, and help business owners so that 
we can make a difference in the lives of 10,000 underserved people. And and also can be able to realize my life dreams and my family's life dreams. So why Action Coach? Well, first of all, it's privately owned. Um, Brad Sugars is the founder and um, current uh, owner and uh, also is an entrepreneur and an author. Um, I spent most of my career with family-owned companies, so I really like the fact that Action Coach is also a, a privately owned company. Our vision is to create world abundance through business re-education. So what does that mean? The school system teaches us how to be employees, doesn't teach us how to be business owners. So those of us who have gone out and become a business owner, we quickly realize that we don't know a ton about how to run a business. And so for those folks who take the time to learn how to be great business owners, the sky's the limit. That's that world abundance. The sky's the limit because the majority of businesses are not following the best practices of how to run great businesses. So when you re-educate yourself, you have a leg up on your competition. Now, we coach about 18,000 businesses a week around the world. We are the number one business coaching firm in the world. And here's a number of accolades that we've received over the years. And we've got about 1,000 offices in 80 countries around the world. All right, my job as a business coach is to help business owners make a lot of money. It's about helping you as business owners improve your business so that you can work less and make more, which ultimately sounds too good to be true. And the reality is that it would be too good to be true if it wasn't for the fact that we have helped hundreds of thousands of businesses around the world. The system is not based solely on theory. It's based on practical experience with real businesses achieving real results. So, I am going to reward your time that you're investing in watching this webinar in three ways. First of all, I'm going to educate you on those best practices of how great companies are run. Next, I'm going to make sure that you leave with strategies to help your business grow that you can implement right away. And then finally, I will help you decide what level of business coaching best fits your needs. All right, here is a, a testimonial video that I wanted to share of some of our clients, what our clients have said about their experience with Action Coach and having us as their business coach. Two years in a row, we had about the same revenue. So we weren't really growing. We would lose a few, gain a few, not really growing. And so I had to decide, okay, do I want to leave it the way it is? Or do I want to grow it enough so that I don't have to clean so much and I can spend more time with grandkids? So guess which one I picked. <laughs> it, it's amazing how much you don't know that you don't know. And I think a business, I think, I think if you're struggling and if you're struggling in business or you're looking to pivot and grow, I think as individuals, as business owners, we can only go so far. And it's really, it's really great to have an ally. It's really great to have an, almost like an additional partner. I mean, we're still responsible for do, doing the work, but it's really great to have that, that other person there as a sounding board to give advice, to give feedback, to challenge you. Um, so yeah, I would say to other business owners, if you've hit a wall, if you've hit capacity, if, you, if you're struggling, you're like, I don't understand. I work so hard. I have such a great team. We, we, we deserve more. It might be that you're just missing something that you can't see, and a business coach can help pull that out. We kind of got to a point where it was getting too messy. Things were happening too fast, and it didn't matter how hard I worked, I was not going to be able to fix this every day. And so that's when I finally threw in the towel and said, okay, it's over my head it's time to call in help. So for me, Tim was the, the, the idea of having a coach was going to be not only to help me learn what I didn't even know I needed to learn, because I knew there had to be plenty of that out there, but it was about pulling in some chaos control. All right. So before we get into the meat of the program, I'd like each of you just to take a minute here and write down what your number one learning goal is for this evening. Okay. So I'll just give you a, a few few seconds to do that. What's your number one learning goal? Okay, so why did I pause, right, uh, uncomfortable silence and give you time to write that down? Well, the reason is that by writing it down, you triggered what's called your reticular activating system. How many of you had an experience where you bought a car and over the next two weeks of driving that car, you seem to notice that everyone else on the road has the same car that you do? <laughs> yeah, it happens all the time, doesn't it? So, well, you all know that 
people didn't all go out and buy the same car at the same time that you did. What happened was going through the buying process, you told your reticular activating system that this thing was important to you. So then it started pointing it out for you because it was helping you with something that you said was important. So what's your reticular activating system? It is part of your brainstem that controls your level of consciousness. In other words, it's your subconscious, right? A significant portion of our brain, over 90% is our subconscious. And all it does every day is work on the things that we tell it to. Whatever the, you know, whatever is in our head, those voices that we tell our, we hear or we tell ourselves is what our reticular activating system is working on. So how do we apply that to, to our business life? We've got to write down our goals. And therefore, by writing down our goals, our subconscious is constantly working on ways to uh, realize them. So your goal for, for this webinar, you wrote it down, and now your subconscious is going to be listening to everything I say to find answers to that goal that you wrote down. How many have had the experience where you couldn't solve a problem all day, uh, but after a good night's sleep, you woke up and you just seem to have the answer pop right into your head? Yes, I've had that too. That's your reticular activating system or your subconscious working on your behalf. So make sure that you are writing down your goals. To be successful as a business owner, you must have yearly, quarterly, monthly, weekly, and even daily goals written down. All right. So let's see. How many of you have heard the phrase, if at first you don't succeed, try, try again? Or hey, next time I'll try harder. Well, most people say they'll try, but you can't try. You either do it or you don't do it. Trying's not an action. You just simply can't try. We call this idea of doing or not doing the point of power. And you're either above or below the point. Below the point, people do, do three things. And what do they do? Call out the first one for me. Yes, they blame. And who do they blame? Ah, anyone they possibly can, right? Their boss, their, their employee, their colleague, their mother-in-law, right? So do this for me. Point at the screen as if you're blaming me for doing something. And now look at your hand and how many fingers are pointing back at yourself. So I wonder who has a bigger control over that situation that we often blame others for, right? So always look in the mirror, right? We can't control other people, but we can control the things that we do, right? So what are we doing to cause that result that we don't want to happen? All right, what's the next thing uh, below the point of power that people do? Yes, they make excuses. How many of you know teenagers who are experts at making excuses? <laughs> well, again, where do you think they learned that from? So always look at ourselves before we point the finger at others. And then finally, uh, denial. If you have uh, people who are chronic deniers in your organization, you want to fire them right away because they are a virus that will spread and bring everybody down in your company. You'll notice that blame excuses and denial uh, is bad. So these people stay in the proverbial bed of life. Opposite of that, folks who are above the point of power take their oar of life and they take ownership, accountability, and responsibility. So here's a good example of, of something that's happened recently. Right? When COVID came about, um, a lot of business owners ducked their head in the sand, right? Below the point of power. I can't control this. I can't do anything about it. So I'm just going to wait for the, the two weeks when this all brushes over and then I'll come back out and, and uh, continue my business. Unfortunately, two weeks turned into two years and a lot of those businesses went out of business. The folks who took ownership, accountability and responsibility said, hey, I'm not gonna let this define me. I'm gonna pivot. I'm gonna figure out a way to make it work and I'm gonna build my business. So every day we've got the choice. We can choose to be powerless or we can choose to be powerful. It's, it's our daily choice. Now, that doesn't mean that stuff's not going to happen, right? It doesn't mean that we won't get those, you know, proverbial punches in the stomach where a client decides to leave us or, or a 
uh, a prospect that we thought for sure was a sure thing decides to go with someone else. And, you know, and that's going to hurt and we're going to dip below the point of power. But the, the point is to, to do the next right thing and, and uh, take ownership, accountability, responsibility. I remember there's a time uh, in my past life where I was in a meeting with a uh, couple owners and uh, a few of the leadership team. And someone said something that really irked me so much so that I excused myself for the meeting. I went to my office, I packed up everything, went out to my car and started driving home. And then I thought about, well, how am I going to explain this to my wife? And so I did a U-turn, went back, um, walked back into the meeting with my tail between my legs, excused myself for stepping out. And fortunately, they just thought I had, uh, you know, had an emergency and, and uh, I kept my job, thank God. Um, so that I, the reason I share that example is I dipped below the point of power. I took negative res, uh, actions, but I realized it and pulled myself back up above the point of power. So you're going to want to make sure that you are aware of those times when you're below the point of power. And if you aren't self-aware, then find somebody in your life who can hold you accountable to that and point it out for me. My wife seems to be an expert at acknowledging when I'm below the point of power, and she's very, um, very willing to share that with me. <laughs> so find somebody who's going to help keep you above the point of power and, and stay powerful. All right, a little bit about learning. There are, um, there are folks who, as soon as a conversation goes into an area that they already have some expertise or some knowledge, will say, I know. Right? In fact, you probably have teenage kids who are experts at I know, right? <laughs> Raise your hands. Yeah, my stepson, uh, there's things that he forgets all the time. And so I will remind them, hey, don't forget to. He's like, I know, Tim. Right? Now, when we become adults, we, we become a little bit more polite with this. We don't shout it out, but we may cross our arms. We may say it to ourselves. We may subtly roll our eyes and, you know, and, and think un under our breath. I already know this. In fact, you might be thinking that right now of, hey, Tim, I already know all this stuff. When are you going to get to the great part? All right, but here's the point. This approach of I know kills the possibility that maybe you can learn something from this conversation. Okay? Um, you're telling your your reticular activating system that there's no value here and for it to go back and work on the other um, problems or projects that you have uh, in your mind or goals that you have and stop listening to this conversation. So instead of I know, I want you to replace that with something like, isn't that interesting? Okay. Can I get agreement that everyone will treat at least this webinar as a totally new experience and say the phrase, isn't this interesting? Awesome. Fantastic. Always keep an open mind to the possibilities of learning. And then to get the most out of every learning experience, you must be willing to have some what? Call this out for me. Yes, yeah, some fun. Ah, you know why? Because business is hard. So it's so important to build in times of fun and celebration. Now, I don't mean just, you know, the quarterly goals and, and having a quarterly party or the annual goals and having an annual uh, Christmas party or, or summer picnic, I mean daily celebrations, right? That could be a, a win board where people freely write up on the board when they have a win throughout the day or a bell. I've got a client who has a bell and when they get a win, they go and ring the bell. So don't just celebrate the big wins, celebrate successes and wins every day because that builds up a momentum and just a fun workplace. All right, so there's two types of businesses. Um, the first type is where the business is driving the business owner and um, the business owner has their hand in every aspect of the business. They have to be involved in all the day-to-day -day activities. All decisions need to be made by them. No one can do the job as well as them, and they're working 60, 70, or 80 hours a week. The other type of business is where the business owner is driving the business. They have a team that take care of the day-to-day -to, -day to run things very smoothly, and the owner is able to duck out early to see the kid's uh, school function or have a four-day weekend or even go away for two weeks of vacation without worry or interruption by the business. 
So how many of you know people who have given up running their own business to go back to a job because they got burnt out? Yeah, unfortunately, I, I do too. And it's sad, um, but it, it happens. You know, here's the thing. Um, unfortunately, many business owners have actually really only bought themselves a job. And in this job, they're working more hours and making less money than when they worked for someone else. Over time, this leads to burnout, and there are too many businesses that go out of business. In fact, the numbers are staggering. About 80% of businesses go out of business. All right, so our goal through the Action Coach program is to move beyond being simply self-employed and climbing up the entrepreneurial ladder. So we all start as employees who have worked for someone else. And then we move to self-employed. Then when we hire employees, we move to a manager. Then a business owner is where the business is able to run without us. When the business can run without us, we now have passive income to invest in other businesses or the stock market or real estate. So we become an investor. And then when the businesses that we have are starting to get investments from other people into our businesses, that's when we become an entrepreneur. So what holds us back from climbing the entrepreneurial ladder? Well, first of all, it's what I mentioned earlier, is the school system teaches us how to be employees. So when we become self-employed, there is a significant learning curve and a humongous mindset shift that has to happen. We have to, a mindset shift of from employee to business owner has to occur in order for us to be successful as a business owner and climb up the entrepreneurial ladder. The other reason that we uh, many business owners don't climb up the entrepreneurial ladder is because they get stuck. Right? And so the reason they get stuck is because we're hardwired to prefer our comfort zone, right? The safety of the way things have always been, right? The, the safety net of I know if I do this, then that. So we we resist change. And so if we find ourselves being stuck lower in this entrepreneurial ladder, we want to look at the formula for change. And that is D times V plus F has to be greater than R. Okay? So D is dissatisfaction. So we have to be dissatisfied enough with our current situation to have any motivation to change. Okay? V is a vision of a better tomorrow. We have to have an understanding of what, what, what is a better tomorrow look like? And it has to be inspiring enough to uh, encourage us and motivate us to change. And then F is first steps. We have to understand the first couple things that we can do to walk towards that vision of a better tomorrow and move away from our dissatisfaction. Um, because if we don't understand those first couple of steps, then again, we won't change. And then R is our resistance to change. So our dissatisfaction times our vision plus our, an understanding of the first steps has to be greater than our natural resistance to change. So congratulations, you made a first step of working towards that vision of a better tomorrow by watching this webinar and learning these best practices. All right, at Action Coach, we define a business differently, a successful business, that is. Um, the way that we just find a successful business is it's not buying ourselves a job. Instead, it's becoming a business owner of a successful business. And that successful business is a commercial profitable enterprise that can run without you, the business owner. All right, so let me walk you through those six steps. We have a methodology to build this successful business that we call the six steps to massive results. Step one, call that out for me. What is it, everyone? Yes, mastery. All right, what is mastery? How do we know when we're a master of something? It's because someone comes and asks us to teach them how to do it. But here's the problem. When people start a business, are they a master at running a business? No, they're a master at carpentry or bakery or engineering or a master of being an accountant or a lawyer or whatever. They're masters of their art or their craft or their trade. So instead, you need to become a master at running a business. This is all about eliminating the chaos in the business. Step two, what is it? Call it out for me, everyone. Yes, niche or niche, however you pronounce it. Um, how do you know that you don't have a niche in the marketplace? 
Uh, it's because you compete on price. The day you compete on price, you don't have a niche. So this is all about marketing to bring in predictable cash flow. All right, step three, what is it everyone call it out? Yes, leverage. Um, and the key to leverage is business, or the key to leverage in business is systems. Okay? So it'll be up to everyone within the organization to systematize the company. This will buy us back our time because of the efficiency that is brought in by those systems. Then we build a team, then we hit synergy, and ultimately we get massive results. This is the six, six steps that we need to build uh, in our business to achieve those massive results. But here's the challenge. Do you think that the average business owner is missing one or two of these things? Absolutely, they are. All right, let me walk through each of these steps in a little bit more detail. Okay, so going back to step one, mastery, and my definition of a commercial profitable enterprise that runs without you, at the mastery level, we're focused only on a commercial enterprise. Okay? And there's four steps to mastery. The first is destination. This is Stephen Covey's idea of begin with the end in mind. Okay? So what does your company look like when it's done? What year is it done? What's the revenue level? What's the profit level? What's the organization chart look like? And how much is the business going to be worth to sell it? Right? If you don't have that mapped out, you'll want to write that down. Then you work backwards and say, what does that look like in three years from now, in one year from now, this quarter and this month? And what do I need to be doing this week? Okay? I have a client that when we first started working together, they said they wanted to be a million dollar business in five years, but didn't have any goals in place to get there. Uh, she is now going into her second year. And she's a little over $500,000. So she's actually outpaced her, her, um, her one, two, and three-year goals. And she also has um, people now running her business for her. So she is ecstatic. Area number two is money mastery. And the objective here is to make sure that we have a good, solid understanding of our financials. Marcus from the profit, the show, the profit says, if you don't know your numbers, you don't know your business. And so here we're looking at things like uh, reviewing our monthly profit and loss statement, our monthly balance sheet statement, looking at our cash flow projections out six to 12 weeks, depending on what our business model is, knowing what our profit margins are and, and reviewing all this on some type of uh, key, KPI dashboard or financial dashboard so that we know the financial health of our business, therefore we're able to make good financial decisions. Uh, a client said to me when we first started working, that, hey, I just give all my stuff uh, to my uh, accountant at the end of the year and I pray that they're profitable. <laughs> now that's certainly not the best way to manage the business, but now they're looking at their financials monthly, they're tracking their business and they've improved their profit by over 200%. Time is the third area of mastery. This is all about knowing the difference between working on the business activities and working in the business activities and having a plan in place to allocate our time between the two and then holding ourselves accountable to those different areas. Uh, a client that did a time study uh, with us uh, told me that they, she was almost too embarrassed to share the results. Uh, she discovered that she was spending about seven hours a week <coughs> on her cell phone. And it would start with a business reason, but then she'd drift into social media and et cetera, et cetera. And once she realized that, she now keeps her phone upside down out of arm's reach, and she just got seven hours a week to work on the business. And then finally, delivery mastery. This is all about ensuring that we're meeting and beating our customers or client expectations. Now, many business owners assume that they are already doing this. They tell me, Tim, I know that I'm great at... at uh, at customer service and we're meeting expectations. And then I asked them when's the last time they sent out a survey for customer feedback. And then they just stare at me blindly. Here's the thing. Most customers who are mildly dissatisfied aren't going to tell you unless you ask. What they will tell you is when they found somebody better and they're leaving you. So make sure you're getting that feedback. All right, so then step two, niche. Back to our definition, we now have a commercial profitable enterprise. Okay? And why, why do, what do I mean by profitable? Um, and what is a niche? Well, as I said earlier, 
It's all about no price competition. If the only reason that your company exists is because you're offering the best price, you're setting yourself up for bankruptcy. A competitor is always going to be willing to undercut you to steal share, and it becomes a death spiral to the bottom. Now, I know there's a lot of concern about raising prices, but here's the thing. Um, we've done surveys, and price is only about 10% of the reason why people buy from a certain company with service and liking the salesperson coming much higher on the list. I have a client who's raised prices uh, three times in two years and achieved over a 250% increase in profit. All right, so how do we create a niche? First of all, we need a unique selling proposition. Right? What is it that differentiates you from your competitors that allows you to charge the price you need to have a sustainable business model? There's an analogy here for value proposition of the three-legged proposition, price, quality, and speed. You can provide two of the three, but you can never provide all three. So use that as a starting point to think about how can you differentiate yourself from your competitors. And then second, you want to have a guarantee. Think about the guarantee as overcoming your customer's number one hesitation for buying from you. Within Action Coach, the number one hesitation of customers buying from us is what if it doesn't work and I've invested all that money? Right? So we have a guarantee that with our one-on-one -on -one programs that your business will grow enough to in 17 weeks to pay for my fees or I work for free until it does. So that lowers the hesitation and the reservation and people are then willing to learn more and explore if this is the right fit for them. So think about what your guarantee is. If you can't think of a guarantee, look at something that you have to provide by law in your industry and then just guarantee that because chances are nobody else is guaranteeing it. And now you have something to differentiate yourself. The other thing uh, within the niche is that you wanna be testing and measuring everything that you're doing in your business, specifically your marketing. I have a client who, uh, before we started working together, told me that they signed up for an 18-month contract on a advertising uh, program that wasn't working. And unfortunately, it was her entire month's uh, budget. And she was locked in for 18 months. So what I, would, what I recommend in that situation is pay more for the first month or the first two months, test and measure it, see if it's going to work. And then if it is working, get the discount and invest in the 18 months. We wanna, we wanna spend a small amount of money on a number of different things to begin with and test and measure them to learn what's working and what's not, and then spend more on the things that are working. We have a philosophy called uh, marketing 10 by 10. So 10 different marketing strategies, each representing about 10% of your lead expectations. That way, if something that worked really well last month doesn't work this month, you don't have all of your eggs in one basket. All right. So the other thing within niche is to focus on the, the marketing and sales activities. And we use a, an action coach tool called the five ways to massive profits. So let me walk you through this. Um, most business owners know uh, how many customers they have, what their revenue is, and how much profit they make. So which of these do you think is the most important? Well, I get answers in my live seminars on all three. So uh, it, it's a mixed, a mixed response that I get. But this is a trick question because none of these are the most important because they're just results. Right? You can't go out tomorrow and get another customer or get more revenue or get profit. So this is where it gets really exciting. What you can do is focus on the five ways to massive profits. So let me start off by just sharing an example of a simple business to show what I mean by the five ways to massive profits. So first of all, here's the formula. Leads times conversion rate equals customers times number of transactions times average dollar sale equals revenue times profit margin equals profit. So this little uh, example that I'm gonna share is a retail example. So number of leads would be how many people come into the store. 
Okay. So let's say over a 12 month period that it's 4,000. Okay. Conversion rate is how many of those or what percentage of those people end up buying. So let's say it's 25%. Okay. So 4,000 times 25% is 1,000 customers or 1,000 people bought. Number of transactions is, is a measure of repeat business. How many times a year did those 1,000 customers buy from us? So some customers will only buy from us once. Some may buy six, seven, eight, nine times a year, but on average, how many do they buy? Let's say in this example, it's two. Okay. Average dollar sale is how much do they spend each time they buy from us? Okay. So some customers might spend $10, some customers might spend $1,000, but on average, how much do they spend? Let's say it's $100. So 1,000 customers times two purchases a year, two transactions a year times $100 per transaction, equals 200,000 in revenue. Profit margin, let's say that's net profit, how much money's left over at the end of the year. Let's say the profit margin is 25%. So 200,000 times 25% is $50,000, right? So I'm gonna come back to this uh, example uh, after I go through the rest of the six steps to show the impact of implementing these best practices on this uh, little business that I just shared with you here. All right, step three is leverage. Back to our definition, we now have a commercial profitable enterprise that works. And why does it work? It's because we're bringing leverage into the business through systematizing the business. So we define systems as saving yourself time, energy, and money. So let's think about that. Um, how many of you have a location that you drive to every day and you drive back and forth the same way? Show of hands. Yeah, and so why do you do that? Why do you drive the same way instead of driving different ways? If you're like the people who come to the live seminars, it's because it's the fastest, quickest way. It's the most efficient way to get there, right? Okay, so when you're driving back and forth the most efficient way, are you thinking about, oh, I have to press the gas pedal now. Oh, I have to turn the blinker on. Oh, I have to press the brake. No. Right. And why is that? Because it's routine. Yes. Because it's subconscious is another word I've heard people tell me. Right. It's just automatic. And what are you doing instead of thinking about the gas pedal and the brake and the blinker? Yeah. You're thinking about other things. Right. What am I going to do when I get to work? What am I going to do when I get home? Uh, what's a solution to that problem I've been wrestling with all day? So you're multitasking. Right. Well, here's the thing. 80% of things we do in business are routine. So if we can systematize the routine, it frees us up to multitask and spend more time on more aspects of the business because we're able to do them more efficiently and more effectively. So there's nine areas to systematizing a business. First, you need to have a vision statement that's inspiring and motivating to get you out of bed every day and to get your employees excited about coming to work every day. I mentioned my vision earlier. It's to impact the lives of 10,000 underserved people over the next 10 years. So that gets me going because you, I shared my story earlier. Like That's meaningful to me. Right? A mission statement is next. That's the how. Like More specifically, what does your business do? Right? So my mission is to work with and help 3,000 business owners over the next 10 years through business coaching to build a better uh, business that can work without them. It's the profits from that mission that I'm going to be able to invest in satisfying my vision of making a difference in 10,000 lives. Okay? So number three is culture. You've got to have your culture defined. What are your values and your beliefs? Right? What does it feel like and look like to work in your organization? What's important to you? Then you need SMART goals, specific, measurable, attainable, results-oriented with a time frame. You have to be able to measure the things that you're doing in your business, set the goals, and then measure your progress against those goals. You have to have an organization chart. Right? What are all the roles in the organization and who reports to who? You need positional contracts. So notice I didn't say job descriptions. But you need to have the roles and responsibilities of everybody in the company defined, and then you have them sign it so that they're agreeing to this contract of what their roles and responsibilities are. 
the company needs key performance indicators. Every employee needs to have key performance indicators of what success looks like. You need how-to systems of all the different aspects of the business. You need to have it um, defined of, you know, how do you do that thing, right? It could be as simple as what's the right way to answer the phone, right? What is the, the uh, way to create a, uh, a group email? What's the way to file these folders? Um, what's the way to follow up on a, a, on a call? Right? Write it all out, systematize it so that then you can train other people to do it the right way. And then finally, you need a management system. You need to make sure that you're managing your employees to results and that you're keeping them focused and on task. All right, let's go to step four, team. This is a commercial profitable enterprise that works without you. And why does it work without you? Because you now have a team in place that's running the day-to-day. Okay. So as your coach, I will help you build this team that can run without you. I'll help you build your team as well. We have team training uh, programs and team coaching programs that we can help you with your team. But here's the thing. Instead of having to have your hand in all of these different aspects of the business, when you've got the right team in place, your responsibility becomes the strategic direction of the organization and taking care of the team. When you take care of the team, they take care of the customers. When the customers are taken care of, they take care of the business through repeat business and referrals. And when the business is taken care of, it takes care of you, the owners, through the profit. So how do you get the right people on the team? Well, it starts with ensuring that you've got the right people on the bus, meaning they're aligned to your vision, they're aligned to your mission, they're aligned to your culture. Okay? You can't train and teach culture. You can train and teach skills. The, the problem or the mistake most business owners make is they, they recruit and hire based on skills. And then they find out that they have the wrong cultural fit or people who aren't aligned to the vision of the company. Okay? So hire based on cultural fit first, and then second, the right people so the right people on the bus sitting in the right seat on the bus means now they've got the right skills or experiences or they're, they're trainable or they're teachable, they're coachable. And then we focus on onboarding them right? and ongoing training to make sure that we're setting them up for success. So six keys to a winning team. First, it starts with strong leadership. That's you. Right? You've got to be uh, growing and learning and developing in becoming a strong leader. You also want to make sure you have a strong number two, uh, somebody that you're grooming to take over for you, somebody who can step in when you go on vacation. You need to have a common goal that the whole team is working towards. You need to have rules of the game. Think of a sports analogy, right? What is, what's the boundary of the field? What's a five-yard penalty versus is eviction from the game? The team knows, needs to know what the rules are. There has to be an action plan for the, for the business. Right? And everybody on the team needs to be assigned part of that action plan so that they know what their, their contribution is and, and what's required of them. You need to have supportive risk-taking, right? We all make mistakes. So you've got to have an environment where it's okay to make mistakes because that's where we learn. And when we're free to make mistakes, that's where we're going to make significant impact on the business. But you also want to have a, a safety net so that employees can't fail too big. Okay? And that's, that's where that management system comes in place where you have meetings with your direct reports and you're reviewing their project and you, they have opportunity to ask you questions and you give them coaching and feedback. And then finally, 100% involvement and inclusion. To be engaged and inspired and motivated to come to work every day, people need to know that they're part of the big picture and that their opinion counts. Doesn't mean you have to take their suggestions all the time, but you wanna make sure that you are listening to their suggestions and that you provide feedback on why you might not have taken their suggestion into account. Or, or implemented their suggestion. All right, finally, um, the fifth step is synergy. This is when everything seems to be clicking in your business. You can begin strategizing on your next step of the entrepreneurial activity, going up the entrepreneurial ladder. The business is now a well-oiled machine. You have passive income that you can take from this business and invest in other businesses. 
And the final step is, is results. The owner is reaping the, the rewards of the businesses and investing it in other businesses or takes time for, for your own personal growth and development. So these are the six steps to massive results. Remember that to achieve massive results, you must take massive action. So let me go back to my simple example to show how powerful this six steps process is. Right? So remember, this was the little business that I shared earlier. All right, so what we know is that when our clients track their business this way by these five areas, that just by tracking it, their business improves by 10% in each of the five areas. The reason for that is because what gets measured is what gets done, right? And what gets focused on. A great example, um, most of my clients overestimate their conversion rate. They'll say, oh, I think it's 50 or 60%. And then they start measuring it and they see that it's only 20%. So now they have a natural motivation to improve that because they see that the result is so much lower than they thought. On top of that, when we start working together, I'll give you a list of 350 strategies across these five areas of ways that you can improve each of those five areas. And so do you feel that it's possible by tracking your business this way and having those strategies that you can focus on that you can improve each of these areas by 10%? Yes, absolutely. Everybody says yes uh, during the live seminars as well, uh, simply because of just by tracking it, our clients see a 10% improvement. All right, so let's look at what that 10% improvement in each of the five areas would look like um, after 12 months. Okay, so number of leads. Um, a, a, a simple strategy here to improve your number of leads is to reach out to your happy customers and ask them to introduce you to someone just like them. Okay. And now you've got another lead. So if we improve leads here by 10%, we go from 4,000 to 4,400. Okay. Conversion rate. Strategy here, reach out to those same happy customers and ask them for a testimonial or a review. And then you can use those testimonials and reviews with new prospects to show them how happy your existing customers are, and that will improve your conversion rate. So a 20 or a 10% improvement on our 25% conversion rate would take it to 27.5. Notice that's a 10% improvement, not a 10 point improvement. So 4,400 times 27.5% gets us 1,210 customers. Number of transactions, a 10% improvement here. Um, uh, one simple way to, to improve transactions is to have a VIP night, you know, a customer celebration night, uh, a special shopping night, right? Where they come in to get uh, things that are only available to them. Right? That's going to encourage a, another shopping uh, occasion for them and going to improve number of transactions. Right? Remember, this is repeat business. So 10% improvement here would go from 2 to 2.2. Average dollar sale. What's the thing that the cashier at McDonald's says to you after you place your order every single time? Yes, would you like fries with that? Or would you, would you like a drink with that or a dessert? So why do they do that? They know that uh, a certain percentage of every single customer is going to say yes. So they're upselling and cross-selling and making more money on that transaction. So think about what's your, would you like fries with that? So a 10% improvement here would go from 100 to 110. So 1,210 times 2.2 times 110 equals 292,820. Profit margin improvement, the simplest strategy here is to take a price increase. Okay. I, I talked earlier about why um, people are concerned about pricing, but every study that's been done has shown that the profit improvement of a 10% price increase will more than offset any customers that leave you. And the customers that leave you are generally the D customers that you don't want anyway. So it actually makes your life easier. So a 10% um, improvement in profit margin would go from 25 to 27.5. So 292,820 times 27.5 would equal 80,525. Now here's where it gets so exciting. Because these are all multiplication, there's a multiplier effect. So our customers went up 21%. Our revenue went up 46% and our profit went up 61%. So now let's think about what if we repeat this exercise year over year and we improve 
some strategies in each of those five areas, or we introduce new strategies in each of those five areas, and we get a 10% improvement in each of those five areas over the next five years. Let me show you what that result would be. So in year two, profit would be up 159%. In year three, up 317%. Year four, 571%. And in year five, up 983%. How many of you would like a thousand percent profit improvement over the next five years? <laughs> I know I sure would, or almost $500,000 in incremental profit. All right, so I wanna share now with you a, uh, a quote, uh, a testimonial. Um, remember I shared that earlier of testimonials help with conversion rate. So I wanna share with you an example of, of what a testimonial is. So here it is. We are in our 16th month and there's no way I will stop coaching. I get so busy because we are growing so fast. My coaching with Tim pulls me back into the space where I need to work as an owner on the things that will sustain the company long-term. Efficiency and sales are up significantly and we're operating daily with clear purpose and direction. Coaching more than pays for itself with our profit up 390% since starting with Tim. In short, business coaching is invaluable to me personally and critical for the long-term health of my company. Team Tim wins. This is uh, my client, uh, Jamie Graham of uh, Fence Boss down in Columbus. All right, now I'm gonna finish off with some quotes from some other folks just to wrap up uh, this learning. So Richard Branson, he says, if you can learn to run one business successfully, there's no reason you can't run any number of businesses at the same time because the principles are the same. So think about the six steps to building a better business and the five ways to massive profits that I just walked through. When you learn those principles and you learn how to apply them in your first business, you can cut and paste that into business number two and business number three and business number four and start generating significant wealth for yourself. Jim Rohn says, never wish your life were easier, wish that you were better. Work harder on yourself than you do on your job. Okay. What this means is the, the struggle or the mistake that most business owners make is they focus all on doing. I'm going to work harder. I'm going to work longer. I, I'm going to take another hour of sleep away. I'm going to stop you know, going on vacations and just work more and more and more. Remember earlier, I, I shared that the number one reason businesses fail is burnout. So there's only 24 hours in a day. We can't work more and more and more. What we have to do is work harder on ourselves, right? We have to learn to become a better business owner. We have to learn how to delegate. We have to learn how to recruit and hire and train. We have to learn how to systematize the business. We have to learn how to do marketing and sales and, and implement those best practices into new employees who can take those things off of our plate and then we can inspire and motivate and manage our employees. So if we're not focused on, on becoming better versions of ourselves on a weekly basis, then we're failing ourselves and we're not following this quote from Jim Rohn. Our owner, Brad Trigger says, where you'll be in five years will depend on the books you read, the people you associate with and the actions you take. So what books are you reading? What videos are you watching? What seminars are you attending? What conferences are you going to? What um, mastermind groups are you part of? Right? Who's involved in your life that's helping you become a better version of yourself? And then finally, Tiger Woods says, no matter how tough you think you are, you can't do this on your own. And he's talking about the value of his coach and support team. I share this, this uh, sports example because it's got a, a, a huge um, correlation to become to, with business owners. Right? So think about it. Every professional athlete in the world has a coach or more or two or three or more, right? And why do they have a coach? Because they know in order to be the best in their game, they need to have others pointing out things that they don't see, right? Teaching them things that they don't understand saying, Hey, if you just, you made a, a, a twist in your wrist if you can stop making that twist, you, your game will improve significantly. So why wouldn't every business owner have a coach? 
to help point out those things, to help teach things that they don't know, to help them course correct, to help them be the best versions of themselves. All right, so finishing up here, uh, think back to the goal that you set at the beginning of this webinar. Did you learn at least one thing that you can apply to your business right away? <laughs> Fantastic. All right, now, since we're all about taking action, what I want you to do is write down that number one thing you learned today and then specifically write out how are you going to action it in your business? How are you going to apply it in your business? And then decide how are you going to be held accountable to implementing that in your business? Most people follow through or fail to follow through on this point because they get busy, the business sucks them back in and they don't have anyone holding them accountable. So make sure that you have some uh, accountability. All right, so who's going to take action? Show of hands. I know I can't see you, but I know you've got your hand up. So that's fantastic. Let's go. All right. So remember at the beginning of the webinar, I said that this was a two-step process. One, um, the first step was this webinar that you were learning all these best practices. And then step two is a one-on-one -on -one deep dive into your business. So this is what I do. As your business coach, I work with you to implement the six steps that we just talked through into your business. I become your uncomfortable friend who pushes you when you need a kick in the butt. <laughs> who confronts you when you're in blame, excuses, and denial, and who reminds you of your end game when you want to quit. Because yes, business is hard and there will be times that you want to quit. So just like a sports coach who continually pushes folks to excel, you'll have hired me to do the same for you. And that is so that you can achieve the business successes that you want and realize the personal dreams that you have. So let me explain step two. I figure there's no better way to determine what level of coaching is right for you than to actually do a coaching session and the first one's on us. So I'll meet with each of you and see how everything we discussed today applies specifically to your business. This will start with a brief questionnaire and then we'll meet for two hours to do deep dive into your business to show how our methods will help you and your business achieve massive results. At the end of that session, if we both agree it makes sense, I'll ask you to make a decision about which coaching program is the best fit for you, right? Now, I have a limited number of these sessions that I offer each month, so you're going to want to take advantage of this right away and get that scheduled. Look, my passion is growing businesses and coaching business leaders, so I guarantee that you'll walk away from that session with a couple strategies to implement in your business immediately. There's no cost, no pressure, and no obligation for that two-hour deep dive. And um, because I don't want people to feel obligated, I want you to make a well-informed decision on whether coaching is right for you. Now, we've got programs that start at $3.95 a month and go up into the thousands. And so um, we'll look at your business specifically and your, the goals that you have in mind to determine which one is right for you. And remember that our coaching programs more than pay for themselves, and we guarantee results. So if you are interested in this, um, uh, I'm going to just have you reach out to me okay, and um, uh, let me know that you want to take advantage of this complimentary coaching session. We'll send you an email uh, after you've watched this webinar that will have a link that you can book that complimentary coaching session on your own. And um, fine. Oh, sorry. And then um, also, I would love for you to help us out. So if you'd take a picture of yourself and send it to me watching this this webinar, or give us a, a video testimonial, or invite two other business owners that you know to, to either our, our live seminar or one of our webinars, that would be fantastic. Right? If you've got any questions on this webinar, please email me, be happy to, to answer those for you. All right, folks, that's everything uh, as part of this webinar. I thank you so much for your time and for investing in your own personal growth and development. Have a fantastic day, whether that's day, evening, or night. It was great to have you, and I look forward to chatting soon. Take care.